Very good. Thanks. Uh, thank you for having us down. We're happy to be here again. Uh, we're going to talk to you about a number of things today because we've kind of been through a few products since the last time we were down here. Um, I think we may have actually spoken to you about the Forester or the, or the Crosstrack maybe even. was our last one. We actually did a full, full uh, kind of walk around on. Um, I'm Dominic Monty. I haven't met you before. Uh, I uh, used to live down here a long time ago and I think I've been now at Subaru for, uh, for almost 15 years. Um, they still don't know what I do, I don't really know. So <laughs> I just keep smiling and moving forward. Um, we had a pretty good year last year with our 50th anniversary, which is uh, kind of a big deal for us. Um, not a lot of companies make it 50 years, you'd be surprised. You know, we look at the top 100 brands. Uh, you know, we, we, we looked at and went back 50 years and there's only like seven that have survived. So that's actually pretty, pretty good. We've had a lot of growth in that time. Um, last year was our biggest year ever. Uh, we sold 680,000 vehicles. Uh, to put that into perspective, when I joined the company in 04, we sold 170,000 vehicles. Uh, oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's a pretty dramatic growth in that period. But we were able to do that in a, in a very organic way. We were able to uh, essentially change the way we sold cars. We were, we were on a kind of a winding road. We were uh, on the verge of going under. Back then, you know, by about 05, 06, it was pretty bad, and um, we decided to reprice all our cars, restructure the way we sold cars, try to stay as far away from incentives as we, as we can. We still have the lowest incentives in the industry. It's uh, it's us and Honda fighting for that position. Uh, we try not to incentivize the cars very much. We try to price them though well enough that you're getting a good value, and uh, our customers appreciate that. And uh, as you see, 10 years of executive sales. <coughs> well, this goes back, kicking off with uh, the, the Crosstrek, I mean, the, the Forester and the Outback when we resized them for the American market. So there was a lot of work that went on behind the scenes to try and get the company in a mode where they could, they could sell and move forward. And uh, it's been, knock on wood, pretty good. We're hoping to uh, sell about 700,000 cars this year. And this is the other big point. We, we're looking at our, our, our market share. And uh, so in, in 04, 05, when I joined, and Peter, you were you were there already at that point, yep. um, but we were 1% of the market, and our goal is to become, in the next couple of years, try to get up to 5% of the market share, right? We think then we're gonna have, we have a sustaining uh, business plan once we go forward with that. That's gonna keep the number of people bringing cars back in and things like that. It'll, it'll ensure that we have a healthy growth. When you, we're already really about 5% when you pull uh, fleet sales out of here. So, um, as you know, a lot of people sell a lot of fleet cars uh, to go to these front car things. We, I think in January, we sold, we sold 20. Uh, we sold about 10,000 for the year last year. We try to sell some just to keep ourselves in that business. And then if, you, if you've been anywhere where you're gonna go skiing, you know that the uh, rental car companies will charge a premium for Supers. So they're actively trying to get Supers. So uh, that's a good thing for us. So we're trying to do, we're trying to do it the right way. Trying to sell the cars by trying to like dump the cars off, but you know we, we, we will keep try to keep ourselves in that market a little bit. Um, people will get into this, but uh, yeah. So as I say, going forward, we're hoping for another great year where we've got a lot of products coming up. Well, we've got well some more products coming up, and I think uh, by the end of this year, our entire product line will have been renewed over the last three years, really. So uh, we're keeping our heads down and working hard, and we know we've got to fight a little bit harder. Everyone's coming after our marketplace. We've been very successful selling. Uh, Selling SUVs and crossovers, which are which are the hot things in the market, but we haven't given up on the uh, sedan market, which I think Peter will mention as well. We just launched our new legacy, and we're very excited about that. So, but uh, thank you very much for having us down. I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, 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 Thanks everybody. Uh, really nice to speak with uh, you today. Uh, nice to. Uh, speak a little bit with some of you and hopefully uh, later on we can uh, I can have the pleasure of uh, speaking with uh, uh, more of you. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about some of the new products that Don mentioned. Uh, my name is Peter Ten. I'm the Carline Planning Manager for the new Ascent, uh, the uh, Legacy, and uh, I'll also be talking about the, uh, the Forester as well. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, Ascent uh, just launched. Uh, it's brand new. We don't even have a year of sales yet. Um, but uh, let's see, next slide. So, but uh, Ascent certainly is off to a, a great start. 
Uh, as you know, Ascent is our largest vehicle. It's our three-row, uh, and it, it uh, replaced the, uh, the Tribeca. We, we took a lot of learnings from the Tribeca and uh, basically applied those learnings to make the uh, Ascent uh, uh, what it is today. Uh, in my opinion, uh, really the best uh, all-around three-row. Uh, you can see some of the uh, stats there. So when we, when we uh, were planning the ascent, uh, we were planning for about 60,000 units. We're gonna be uh, shattering that by the end of the year. Uh, it's uh, now the highest rated uh, three row uh, for on consumer reports. And uh, we're literally uh, selling more than we can make at the moment. So it's been a tremendous success. Okay, so what I wanna do today is, I don't wanna basically dictate or, 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 or uh, tell you about what you might find in the brochure. I really want to talk to you about more of the, the background and what went into the thinking of, of why we did things uh, the way we did. Um, obviously for the, for the Tribeca, we really had to uh, capture this uh, segment that uh, has a lot of growing families, they need more space. We kind of had a hole in our portfolio in terms of the customers we were reaching. We were, we were uh, losing customers uh, that wanted a bigger vehicle. We basically, uh, they were basically outgrowing, outgrow, outgrowing our brand. So uh, that was one of the main uh, jobs of the Ascent is to recapture some of those folks and also uh, conquest uh, from other brands as well. And uh, we knew we had all the raw materials in our brand to really bring them the best, best vehicle in terms of things they wanted like safety, uh, reliability, uh, versatility, these are all things that uh, those buyers uh, really value. And as I said, uh, we, uh, we learned a lot from the Tribeca. So these are some of the key appeal points and what we call purchase drivers. These are the things that people really uh, value uh, in the shopping experience. Things like safety uh, with our EyeSight system. How, how many of you have driven our Subaru with EyeSight? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, it's getting, it's getting a lot, of, lot more popular. With the Ascent, we offered it standard uh, for the first time on Ascent. So all Subaru models have, the, have our EyeSight. Uh, EyeSight is our uh, uh, driving, uh, driving safety technology, which includes automatic braking and lane keep assist and so forth. Um, convenience also obviously was a very important aspect of, uh, of Ascent during the planning phase. So as I said, uh, we kind of had a hole in our portfolio. We're specifically targeting uh, growing families. Those tend to be uh, gen, 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 uh, gen Y and Gen X at the moment. So uh, we can kind of see that this is a typical uh, generational chart. Um, but actually, uh, we get a lot of uh, boomers buying, uh, buying this segment as well. Put a lot of emphasis on the interior, really nice materials, really expansive. Uh, design language really shows off a lot of space and the, and the technology really is the focal point. Of course space is important for this segment and uh, you can see their ascent versus some of the competitors. So everything in the blue on those specs we, we beat their, their competitor numbers. So uh, we're not the largest, we don't claim to be the largest, but we're certainly not the smallest. We're, we fit right in the mid sedan <laughs> segment. Uh, category. Of course, ca uh, cargo area also very important. And again, we strived to uh, be very competitive in cargo area, especially things that are really important, like uh, cargo uh, area opening. That's very important. Um, you might see some brands that have uh, you know pretty large uh, volume of cargo uh, space, but the opening may be very small. Uh, one, of the re one of the reasons why we get such large openings in our cars is because we're using a lot more uh, high-strength steel than a lot of other, other brands. The high-strength steel allows you to use uh, smaller cross-sections on your pillars, uh, smaller, uh, smaller dimensions on some of those structural items that usually take up a lot of space, like pillars and, and bulkheads and such. And again, cargo volume. Uh, very, very, very competitive. And uh, we designed the vehicle to hold American-sized things, like that stroller. Uh, maybe that, maybe not that big, but uh, 
but uh, but literally we we bought strollers the planning team bought strollers took our kids out put them in competitive vehicles we sent all the uh, all the strollers and car seats to Japan and said here it's got to fit all this stuff make it fit and they did so one of the nice aspects of ascent is that we're giving customers a choice in terms of seating uh, some brands give you the choice of, say, captain seats, but they're usually on the higher trims, either their platinum trims or their, their touring equivalent trims. So what we've done with Ascent is we've really trickled down the seating choice uh, to more than just the touring or the, or the limit models. Even on a premium uh, trim, which is sort of our mid-range mid value trim, you can get a choice of, of seating. And we don't charge for that. We don't charge extra for the captain seats. It's just because we know there's value to the eight passenger for some and seven passengers for others, so we don't, we don't penalize one or the other. Uh, it's basically uh, no charge for the captain seats. I'll just go over some of the nice features. Ventilated heated seats in the uh, touring trim. Auto vehicle hold, which I love this feature. Um, it's a nice feature for, the, for, a, for a family. So essentially you come to a stoplight, you can take your foot off the brake, the vehicle will just stay there, it'll, it'll hold the vehicle until you uh, start to accelerate. Nice for uh, distracted parents. It, you're not always pushing the brake maybe as hard as you should because you're distracted. You wind up rolling into the car in front of you. This will hold the vehicle until you're ready to go. Uh, lots of reading lights everywhere, lots of power outlets everywhere. Uh, underfloor storage. Uh, it's so important to have storage behind the third row, and uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the specs again, you'll see that behind the third row uh, dimensions were actually uh, better than most. Lots of cool features here. You can even program birthday, birthday uh, greetings in, into, the, uh, into the displays, and uh, eight USB ports, so plenty of, plenty of uh, Plenty of power. This is a, this is a cool thing too. This is something the Japanese engineers uh, came up with. I think we're the only ones in the segment to have anything like this. So we built in these handles to get to the third row, and they were uh, they were inspired by the bullet trains in Japan, uh, according to the engineers. But they're very functional, and it's again that's a Subaru way. That's how we that's how we roll. I guess we are always looking for that functional uh, aspect of any product. Uh, all new power plant in this vehicle. This is our 2.4 direction injection turbocharged uh, boxer engine, of course. Uh, one of the things you'll notice when you go out and look at the vehicle and open the hood um, is how low the engine is. It's incredibly low because that's something we're always trying to strive for as a brand. Low center of gravity, car is very stable, and it's very well uh, demonstrated on the vehicle outside, but that you'll see. <laughs> takes regular gas, doesn't, doesn't need to take uh, uh, you know, super unleaded, just regular gas. Uh, new high torque CVT transmission, of course, coupled with, uh, with the new engine. And uh, we have a 5,000 pound towing capacity, so very competitive towing capacity. Um, and it really wouldn't be a Subaru if it didn't have some off-road chops, which this certainly does. This is, has as much ground clearance as our Legendary Outback, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And you can see uh, how we stack up again against the competition. Everything in blue uh, is where we, uh, you know, we beat the competition on in terms of approach angle, ground clearance, uh, and one of the uh, cool things we have on the set, like our other uh, SUVs, is the X mode for off-road driving. So uh, every bit is capable as uh, as our other. Uh, SUVs in terms of off-road capability. And I think everybody knows about the 19 cup holders, but yes, it actually has 19 cup holders. <laughs> you can actually fit all those cup, cups in, in that vehicle. And uh, my family, personal story, has definitely tested this, this out. <laughs> so, uh, so let's talk about Forrester, uh, all new. All new Forester, again off to an amazing start. Uh, we're, we're, we're we're selling more than than, than we can make. I think we have maybe a forty day supply, which is really low. I mean, again, the the, the rule of thumb is usually around sixty days. So, 
um, just so the dealers have all the, the inventory that they, they need to, and, and the variety of vehicles that they need to sell the vehicles, we're, we're, uh, we're actually selling more than we can make, so that's a, that's a good story. Uh, this is the fourth generation of Forrester. Uh, the Forrester formula really hasn't changed. It's a, it's a good formula, so why change it? But basically, it's a, it's a story of a vehicle that uh, gives you the best versatility uh, that you can possibly get in a, in a, in a small SUV. Uh, styling is all new. Everything, everything about it, everything about it's new. Uh, it's designed to be a, a more emotional, uh, but yet also very practical. And you can see some of the uh, descriptions there in terms of the, the styling details. Uh, interior also uh, is, is meant to evoke spaciousness and practicality at the same time. You know, sweeping lines. And again, a, a lot of emphasis on uh, that where you touch, where you where your hands go, where, where you know the levers and so forth. Uh, this is a cool illustration. And it shows uh, our new Subaru Global Platform and some of the uh, forces, let's say either the front of the vehicle is to the left, the back is to the right, and you can see the previous model how some of the uh, chassis geometry worked in terms of channeling forces. So the red one is, uh, is the new model, and you can see it's just a more efficient transfer of energy. It doesn't have, there's less 90 degree bends uh, in terms of uh, channeling energy in a more efficient way. But just about in every, in every uh, torsional, to every, every way, every way that the, the, the chassis can get flexed, torsional rigidity, um, side rigidity, everything is, is much improved. Uh, and I, as I said, the vehicle really is, is all about versatility. Even on the areas that you don't see or may not show up on a spec sheet, but things like having a huge rear door opening, uh, having, uh, having a rear door opening allows you to get out easier, allows you to put child seats in easier. Building in steps, again, these are not necessarily sexy things, but they are certainly practical that the customers definitely appreciate as they use the vehicle. It's really a vehicle that you, you can live with and you appreciate it as you live with the vehicle. Uh, we have, again, versatility story, one of the widest openings, and you'll see when you see the car out there, widest opening uh, in, the, in, in the class, really 5.51.2 inches is just ridiculously wide, it is amazing. Uh, one of the things we noticed while we were developing it, and it's kind of funny, it's on the next slide, is that uh, when we introduced our, uh, in the 60s, our 360, you know, our little mini car in the 360, uh, you can actually put the 360, uh, the 360 width is, is the same width as the opening of the Forester. So that's how far we've come. But everything's gotten bigger, right? Even people have gotten bigger. Uh, but uh, that's kind of an interesting, interesting observation. Uh, we're introducing the Forester Sport for the first time. This has been a tremendous success. One of the missions for Forrester Sport was really to try to bring in a younger demographic, a, a demographic that really was more active and wanted a more dynamic vehicle. Um, and the Sport trim seems to be, uh, seems to be doing just that. And, uh, and we can tell from the, the, the sales, uh, sales that we, uh, the, sales, uh, the sales history and the, and the research that we're doing, we know we're tracking these younger buyers. So it's a lot more dynamic in terms of styling and uh, appeal. <coughs> and of course, it wouldn't be a Subaru without a safety story. This is really, you know, su safety of course is a pillar of our brand. Uh, and just like the Ascent that I talked about before, we have a full suite of safety features, including eyesight, standard LED uh, headlamps, um, outward visibility, which is something that we're very proud of. And I know you folks drive a lot of cars, you drive Subarus, you drive the competition. One of the things I notice when, I, when I'm renting a car, I'm on a business trip, I rent a car, it's the visibility is, is just, our visibility is just amazing. We really, we really try to make sure that the DLO, or what we designers call the daylight opening, all the glass area, is as big as possible. We try to keep our belt lines and shoulder, shoulder lines as low as possible. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we went to having the, the mirrors, the side view mirrors on the door, instead of having it in the little triangle, 
uh, by the A pillar, and we have a window there to give you more visibility. So all these little things uh, help with the visibility. We just don't, we have the technology like, you know, blind spot and rear cameras and such, but we don't 100% rely on that. We still think it's good to be able to see out of the car uh, in, in, in addition to the technology. Uh, driver focus, which I'll talk about in the legacy section, is a new feature, uh, again, to uh, enhance the safety safety offering. Uh, Off-road capability is important to these uh, small SUV buyers, and again, on the right side, you can see uh, we have an 8.7 ground clearance, which far exceeds uh, the competitors in terms of off-road capability. We, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. I know a lot of brands are starting to emulate our marketing message in terms of showing people in outdoor activities and they've got the kayaks on the roof and all that, but, but you know, we, we're the ones that can really do it. Uh, in fact, uh, Subarus are driven off-road more than any other brand except Jeep. So more than any other brand except Jeep. So that's, uh, that's telling you that, that these people really do use these cars uh, for what they were designed to do. So, um, do you want to, any questions or should I keep going? Two questions, yeah. Okay. So, uh, very proud of the, the new legacy. We just introduced the new legacy in Chicago <laughs> and had an incredibly, uh, incredibly huge uh, reception to, to, the, uh, to this vehicle. It's interesting, uh, as brands are starting to sort of drop away from the sedan segment, you know, we feel uh, sedans are still very important for our for our business, uh, our customers have told us so. Uh, there, there are uh, still a lot of people that uh, they they want a sedan. They like what sedan offers in terms of styling and in terms of uh, you know the overall packaging. They just like to have that that type of packaging, and that's that's really great because it is a huge segment. It's a 1.5 million vehicle segment, as you know. Uh, and uh, as other brands start dropping out, that uh, you know potentially just makes the, our slice of the pie uh, a little bigger. And the way we do it is again in a Subaru way, focusing on things like safety, dependability, and comfort and convenience. Um, this is the seventh generation legacy. We've been making uh, legacies for a long time. Let's see, when did I start with the company? I started in '98, so that'd be like right here, a long time ago, 20 years ago. Uh, and as Dom said, that we were selling a little over 100,000. So when I started, we were selling about 100,000 total Subarus. So we've come, come quite a long way. Over, over time, we've made uh, incremental improvements. The car has gotten uh, the bigger in terms of packaging and comfort. Uh, we started adding a lot more safety technology. And as you can see, with every generation, typical generation is about five years. Every five years, uh, you'd see a, a significant upswing in uh, the amount of sales, which, uh, which is only logical if you're making a better product. Um, in terms of safety, again, Subaru pillar, uh, active safety, very important, as well as passive safety. And especially with the passive safety, we put a lot of uh, focus on making sure that we will uh, have the highest ratings uh, for NHTSA and IIHS uh, as well when we launch this vehicle. So uh, you're looking at full suite of airbags, pre-tensioners -pre on the seat belts, uh, of course, Subaru Global Platform that I talked about before, which will be incorporated into, into Legacy. And we uh, are very aware of all the, uh, we try to be as aware, aware as we can of all the upcoming tests that will be required by uh, organizations like IIHS. They always, they're always coming up with new tests and, always challenging manufacturers. Uh, they're always making it harder, essentially. Uh, a lot of these, over, uh, these overlap tests are getting harder and harder. Uh, they're testing the, the cars uh, basically with a smaller and smaller impact zone, which makes it harder for the engineers because the car has to, to absorb all the energy of a crash in a smaller space. So uh, it makes it a lot more difficult, like this side impact pole test. You know, it's not just the sled that slides, slides into the side of uh, the vehicle. Now all the forces have to be concentrated on a pole, which, which is really a, a tough thing to do. But we do it because we make it a priority to do it. Uh, and part of the way we do it is, again, with our Subaru Global Platform. We introduced the Subaru Global Platform with the uh, Impreza uh, a couple years ago. And of course, nothing, nothing stands still. We're always trying to make improvements. 
Uh, one of the neat things about uh, the uh, Legacy is that we're, it's, you're almost getting two chassis in one. We have this full inner frame construction, so you have an inner frame and then you have an outer frame uh, skin on top of that. So you, it it's a, it's a, it's a, creates a very strong structure. Um, you can see that stat there. So when we introduced the, the Impreza, we had about seven meters of, of uh, structural adhesive, uh, including welds, of course, holding it together. And now we're using over 50 meters of structural adhesive uh, on, on Legacy. It's quite, quite incredible. So what does that do? That does a couple things. It makes the chassis more rigid. It, there's less vibration. There's less uh, air intrusion so you get less noise coming through um, it's more expensive to do it that way but again that's uh, you know that's 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 part of the Subaru value you get you get uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of car for the money we have uh, structural members that uh, we inject a high-density foam into a lot of these areas here inject high-density foam you know not, not the kind you buy at Home Depot in the red can uh, a little more sophisticated than that, but in these areas, in the uh, in the subframe, uh, to uh, to mitigate noise and vibration. And the results uh, speak for themselves in terms of the improvements over the old model. The old model uh, lateral uh, rigidity up 100%, torsional rigidity, you know, the twisting that's up a uh, 70%. Uh, suspension mount rigidity also increased as well as the subframe rigidity also uh, tremendously increased. Quietness, and I, that's something we focused on, but quietness in itself is not really that uh, important per se. Sound engineering is what I like to call it. So we try to target where we make the vehicle quiet and how we make the vehicle quiet. Um, we have performance car routes, and one of the things that our customers say they want is they want they don't want to be they don't want to be totally isolated from everything outside. So they want to be able to sense the car as it drives, as it as it accelerates, but they don't want to be to it to be so loud where they can't have a conversation in the vehicle. So when I say sound engineering, it's about strategically looking at where and how we can reduce noise in a vehicle. Um, so for example. Uh, this front seat noise uh, chart here on on the uh, on the right, the new model, new legacy. Uh, we have really good uh, decibel and frequency levels, uh, so you can carry on a conversation very easily. And uh, the one on the left, that spider chart on the left, is basically showing different metrics like acceleration, high frequency during acceleration, uh, going over cracks or bumps in the road. Um, in certain areas, we're not the quietest because we feel that. You know, sometimes you want to hear the car accelerate, and so I guess the closest benchmark is at a, a six. They kind of have the same philosophy, where you're not completely isolated from the outside. You want to be able to hear the car when you want to, but at the same time, you want it quiet uh, uh, when you need to. Uh, I touched on driver focus a little bit. And I don't know if most of you folks are familiar with it, but this is. Uh, essentially facial recognition technology. It's pretty cool, it does a couple things. So it senses if you're drowsy or you're being distracted by you know, traffic or an accident on the other side of the road and it'll, it'll alert you and remind you to say, hey, you know, uh, might wanna keep your eyes on the road in a very nice way. Uh, or if you're drowsy, you know, uh, it, it'll, it'll tell you that, uh, you know, it'll warn you that you, you may be dozing off. And the nice thing too, it does recognize the driver. You actually set it up when you get in the vehicle and it recognizes you and it'll greet you and say, hello, Alice, welcome back, something like that. Um, and then another person gets in the car and they'll, their face will be recognized and then their seat position will be, will be adjusted uh, according to their, their settings. So, so that's a, that's a nice, nice feature that uh, we're gonna be launching on, on more models. Packaging is very important for the uh, mid-sedan segment. And uh, again, just like the other charts I showed, everything in blue, all those metrics in blue are, are where, we, uh, where we beat the competition on those, on those dimensions. So again, we're not, the, we're not trying to be the largest. Uh, we're certainly not the, the smallest. We comfortably fit right in that segment. And on some key uh, dimensions like legroom and so forth, uh, we actually beat the competition. So that was really 
the intention going in. You know, we're, we, we, Legacy always had really good interior packaging. The idea was to make it even better incremental. Not only for the cabin, but for the, uh, for the, for the trunk as well. Eventually, you're gonna see the car, it, you'll, you'll be able to drive it, but what we try to do with uh, things like the trunk, for example, is make it very practical. It's a little bit bigger than the Alcoin model, but we took a lot of great strides in trying to reduce the things that sometimes impede putting things in the back of the vehicle, like if speakers are sticking down or if things are protruding in the interior, even though the volume might be good, those little things sometimes will prevent you from putting a suitcase in. And if you can't put a suitcase in or as many, or as many things as you want, then uh, all that volume in the world uh, is wasted. So we really tried to focus on a very practical uh, design for the trunk as well. Uh, stress, so, yeah. <laughs> Stress, relief, we're trying to make the driving experience as comfortable as possible to reduce stress, reduce road noise, reduce vibration. Um, I think I, uh, the, the eyesight does a lot of that, especially the adaptive cruise. I'm sure you've all driven cars with adaptive cruise. Uh, I, drive, I, I don't use anything but adaptive cruise. I just turn it on and I, I, I find that I'm a lot more relaxed. Um, but we don't want to be like this guy. Uh, he's a little stressed. We want to be more like, like this guy. And that's really our, our goal, is to create a very uh, stress-free driving uh, experience. Uh, one of the technologies that uh, we think will help with that is this Advanced Adaptive Cruise Control, AACC, with lane centering. Now, it takes Adaptive Cruise Control to a higher level where uh, now you have full in-traffic uh, cruise control, so if the traffic comes to a stop, you'll come to a stop. When the traffic starts to move, you'll, you, you can uh, advance as well. And of course, lane centering, which is really nice. Uh, some, some other brands have this, uh, and uh, now we have it as well. And that, uh, that's all the way up to 90 miles an hour. Not all brands uh, go up to full highway speed, but our, uh, ours does. Uh, and then we're wrapping up here, just looking at some of the, the conveniences that we try to build in, uh, like the door mirror, Interlock with the seat memory, okay, that's a nice thing. Bringing some of the features of the Ascent over to Legacy, like the seat extensions. Seat extensions for the driver. And these integrated roof carrier brackets, again, this is something that completely dovetails with our brand in terms of practicality. Even though you're driving a, uh, a sedan, you're driving a Subaru, so it has to be practical. All-wheel drive, boxer engine, and integrated uh, points for the uh, for the for the roof rails. So you're not you're not you don't have to rely on uh, clamping it to the to the body or, or door of the of the vehicle. These are integrated. And uh, legacy new for legacy is the touring trim. Touring trim will include uh, this uh, uh, brown interior. And the nice thing with uh, touring also is you get an upgraded leather uh, trim seating. It's actually Napa, Napa leather, which um, it's not cheap, but uh, we think it does add a lot to the vehicle in terms of the look and feel and even the smell of the interior. It just, it just gives it a much more uh, luxurious uh, feel. And uh, again, uh, new for Legacy are basically two new engines. Uh, we've got the 2.5 liter uh, engine and the 2.4 liter, which is similar to the Ascent's 2.4 liter. It has been modified, there's a lot of new engineering in it, but essentially the, the major components are very similar. Uh, so this, uh, this new 2.4 turbo uh, replaces the uh, previous uh, H6 uh, that we had in the car before. Uh, so even with these, uh, these new engines, uh, we still expect to get very good gas mileage, and you can see uh, on the top right there. Uh, this is our new model in red versus some of the competitors. Uh, don't forget this is all-wheel drive versus their front-wheel drive. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we're, we're right, in, right, in the, uh, right in the competitive set in terms of uh, MPG <laughs> with all-wheel drive, so that's a really good story. Uh, for the sport model, we're going to be offering our SI drive. A lot of our sports cars in the past have offered SI drive, and it's just basically an electronic means of making the driving experience uh, more engaging uh, in terms of 
uh, changing the, the characteristics of the engine, uh, making the acceleration curve a lot steeper, and uh, just giving you a lot more fun uh, in the driving experience. Handling, of course, is important. This is not necessarily a sports car, but we know that drivers, especially Subaru drivers, like to be engaged in the driving experience. So uh, one of the things that we try to do is we try to make vehicles that handle well so that they're safer. And so we put a lot of time and effort into this emergency handling maneuvers, trying to be the best we can be uh, in terms of those kinds of maneuvers. And in our internal testing, uh, we, uh, we did very well against the competitors. Uh, we actually have uh, a, a track in Japan that uh, can mimic the uh, track at, uh, at CR and really compute some reports and really mimic a lot of the, uh, the handling, uh, uh, the handling uh, geometry of their, of their track uh, at Consumer Reports so we can mimic that. And, uh, so we know we'll do very well in, in that score. And really the star of the interior is this new uh, tablet style head unit. It's 11.6 inch vertical uh, multimedia display and it, uh, it really is amazing uh, the way it works, the, the, the quickness of the touch, uh, brings you all the information. The nice thing about a big screen is now the buttons can be very big. And uh, because we're Subaru, we know that uh, uh, our customers still uh, a lot of them still live in, in snowy areas where they wear gloves, so uh, we're keeping a, a lot of the hard buttons are very important. So instead of going to a full touch screen, we actually do retain a lot of the hard buttons, the volume knob, tuning knob, and, and things like that. You, you've seen a lot of brands go away from that, and then some of them have to come back to put knobs back on. Uh, we, we recognize the importance of having physical knobs, so uh, you will find them on, on that vehicle. About it. Any any questions? Pricing. Haven't announced pricing yet. Um, we're literally working on it when I get back to the office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>